Hello friends, in our last lesson we took an analogy of flow of water through a pipe. In this lesson we will use the same to understand what is electric current. Let us take a copper wire and attach it to a small electrical appliance, say a small fan. Let us attach both the ends of copper wire to both the ends of fan. Does it run? No. Now we attach a small battery connect its one end to one wire and the other end of that wire to fan and the other end of fan through the second wire back to the battery. Does the fan run? Yes. So we know fan requires electricity to run. But why it didn't run till we attached a battery to it? Let's try to find the answer to it. Let us first look at the copper wire internally. We know each element is made up of atoms and each atom constitutes of positively charged particles called protons and uncharged particles neutrons inside the nucleus of the atom and the negatively charged electrons are moving around the nucleus in different shells. In case of copper, its atomic number is 29. So it's each atom has 29 protons in the nucleus and 29 electrons moving around the nucleus. Two electrons in the first shell, eight in the next shell, 18 in the next shell, and only one electron in the outermost shell, farthest from the nucleus. As number of positively charged protons is equal to neg negatively charged electrons, the atom is neutral. Now, let us take two wires. Attach one end of each copper wire to the motor. Does it work? No, because nothing has changed. All the atoms in the copper wire are still in the neutral state. Now say we connect a battery to the other ends of both the wires. We represent it in the circuit diagram in this way. This is the battery. The positive end of the battery is connected to the fan through the wire. The other end of the fan going through the second wire to the negative end of the battery. We haven't taken a switch to control the flow of electric current for now. Note a battery has a positive end and a negative end. The positive end means a lot of atoms with lesser electrons than protons. The negative end means a lot of atoms with more electrons than protons. So what happens now? when we connect battery to the wire. Let us focus only on the outermost shell of few atoms of the copper wire. Note, a wire has lots and lots of atoms. For simplicity of illustrations, we are showing only few atoms. And why only the outer shell? Because it has only one electron and can be easily moved. The other inner shells of copper have more electrons and are tightly moving around the nucleus. So from the negative end of the battery, an electron enters the wire. Because negative forces repel each other, this new electron enters the outermost shell and pushes the electron from the outermost shell of this atom in the copper wire to the next atom in the wire. Now the next atom has an extra electron which pushes its outermost shell electron to the third atom in the wire. Now this electron from the second atom enters the third atom's outermost shell and pushes its electron to the fourth atom and so on. This way the process goes on and electron moves from one atom to other till it comes to the positive end of the battery which attracts the same. And this flow of electrons that is negatively charged particles through the wire is called electric current. It flows through the wire through the fan and the fan rotates and the copper wire is the conductor that is it is allowing electric current to flow through it easily. So electric current is the flow of electrons through the conducting material and we will learn more about it in the next lesson. Till then, bye bye.